Hello my online friends. I hope you're doing okay. I'm wearing the same sweater that I've worn in the past videos, but it's because this is the only sweater I want to wear. It's cold. I want to wear my thickest sweater. You are going to have to live with that. I also have this big cup of coffee with lots of like sugar, syrup and spice inside, so it feels like it's December. I'm trying to, to LARP the December experience here. Uh, because I, it's the end of January and I realized that there are loads of books that I read in December that I never talked about Which is a pity because some of them were really interesting uh, I mentioned some in my favorites of the year, but I feel like even though we are like in this January month <laughs> This January month. Yeah, even when we, though we are in the end of January I still feel like I wanted to wrap up my December reads so that is what this is, which the title probably already informed you of. <laughs> but anyhow, let's just do... Oh my god. I read 11 books in December, that's kind of... that's a lot, that loads. So going chronologically, because I have the Goodreads challenge here on my side. The first book I finished in December was The Odyssey by Homer. And... Um, I listened to this as an audiobook, which I think was really good because as you know, it's an oral tradition, so it it's suited to be spoken. But I found it a bit disappointing because I thought I thought the majority of the book would be about Odysseus experiences while traveling and like meeting all of these beasts and as long as that was the main topic of the story I was quite content, I quite enjoyed it, but then it turned out the majority of the story was him returning to Ithaca and kind of hanging out with the servants and challenging all of the, what are they called, the people who want to marry Penelope and doing the challenges and killing everyone. And I just didn't read that, didn't really interest me very much, so what I found interesting was the like adventure bit. And I kind of think maybe the worst version I listened to was a bit abridged. I can imagine that there is a longer version out there with maybe more more of the things that I wanted, which was the like the various mythological creatures and beings that he encounters on the way. Yeah, I, I'm kind of happy I read it, but it wasn't as enjoyable as I thought. But then I read something about there being a, a new translation like into English, the first published translation made by a woman, and that kind of sparked my interest because, I don't know, I've, I've, it's interesting to see how people translate these stories differently, so if I could get my hands on that, maybe I would be interested in reading that, but so far, I, the Odyssey... Three out of five, maybe, huh? Yeah. Um, the next book I finished in December was a graphic novel called Spinning, which was really cute, but I think when I was reading it, I thought, hmm, I wonder how old the person who wrote this is. And it turns out the person wrote it when they were like 22 or 23. It's about a girl who grows up doing, yeah, the sport that's on the screen right now and maybe isn't super dedicated to it but just has done it all of her life and keeps doing it out of tradition or routine and it depicted a very dysfunctional family dynamic and was kind of a it gets better story but as the person writing is still so young, I felt like I wish I wish I would have gotten a bit more of the the aftermath or like how this person deals with adulthood having all of these experiences. Because a lot of the, the book dealt with growing up with an emotionally distant mother and not really having a an open talking relationship in their family and being kind of finding other things to attach to, like their sports, and and I was really curious about how that translated into adulthood, but then 
as the person is hasn't been an adult for very long I also understand that it's not it's not about adulthood because that's not the topic that that person has experienced the most but it was fine it was very sweet it intrigued me that it was about whatever the sport is called and because I never I never knew much about that and then I finished, oh, then I finished what was turned out to be one of my top 10 books of the year, which was 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I've talked about this so many times on my channel because it's f featured in a bunch of vlogs, but to summarize, it is a book about a family, it spans over 150 years, and it's maybe the most famous starter of the, the magical realism genre or yeah that style of telling. I really enjoyed it. I'm thinking about rereading it next month actually because I feel so strongly about returning to that world. It's one thing that I noticed about that book that was that I find interesting uh, and if you've read it I would love to like discuss this because I, f I felt like this book, you know, there's this expression of like show don't tell that you are supposed to give situations that depict the person's traits instead of saying that this person has these traits. And I found 100 Years of Solitude did exactly the opposite and did it in a very brilliant way. It kind of, of course, it gave us situations where the characters lived out their ways of being, but for a lot of it, since it's packed so densely with story, a lot of it is actually the author telling us this person is like that, this situation was like that, this person felt this, instead of like flashing it out into these kind of more traditional scenes where you would expose the, the traits or the emotions of the person. And I found it lovely and it reminded me a lot of reading yeah, reading a family chronicle, like if you were reading through documents about your own family and you get only these short sentences describing ancestors and people that you have, have not known on, and maybe people you have that are alive now have not known, so you only have these very short and brief descriptions of who they were and the situations they fi figured in. And it told this story of time that was deeply fascinating to me because it impacted me so much that I feel as if these characters are people that I have met and people that have been in my story even though the story it tells is so far from my lived experience I feel so... I don't know, it made, it made me feel humble in a way that this story was able to be told in words a story that felt so alive and vibrant in how it made me internalize these characters and feel as if they are part of my history, like that can be done with pencil and paper, it's astonishing to me. Yeah. So that's how I feel about that one. Maybe I will reread it and give you more experiences into my rereading experience. Ooh, yeah. Oh, the next one. Uh, the next book I finished in December was probably my biggest disappointment of the year. Um, I speak of Sarah Gailey so much on this channel because I had such an amazing experience this summer reading American Hippo, the two books set in the fictional Wild West with queer characters and a very funny story and I finally got my hands on the, the book they published this year called Upright Women Wanted. It's been the book I've been looking forward to all year and then I read it. And I did not like it. I mean, on a degree of bad books, it's like not in the bad books. It's not, you know, the paper of being a wallflower, the wallpaper of being, you know, the, it's not like that. It's not uh, bad in that way. It's like well done and it's by someone who loves their craft and knows how to tell a story, blah, 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 blah. But it felt as if it never really landed, it felt a bit rushed. As Sarah Gailey's previous novels, this is also very short. And there was loads of story crammed into it. We follow the 
the librarians. We are in, I think, a sort of post-apocalyptic North America where there is a very conservative government ruling and there is also civil wars going on between different parts of North America. And the librarians are supposed to be responsible for delivering government approved materials to the different regions because people are extremely poor so it reminds you a lot of the like 1930s and those photographs of that photographer, you know. Um, so they are traveling between these villages, delivering government approved material, but they are actually the center of the resistance. So they are also taking care of providing forbidden materials and they are queer and doing the good anti-fascist uh, struggle, you know, which is a great premise. They are librarians. It's beautiful. Um, but it was just too much tried to be crammed into one story and also it had this strangeness where the main character was doubting herself internally all the time, had this classic, that I would say is kind of a classic YA trope of the main female character having lots of insecurity that's expressed through inner dialogue, inner monologue, sorry. And it just did not fit the character, it did not fit Sarah Gailey's writing style, it did not fit the situations. This character claimed on constantly in their inner monologue to be insecure and then acted in very confident ways. And I also feel like the strength of Sarah Gailey's writing that I found to be so amazing and good in the American Hippo books was the way that all of the characters were so confident in themselves. They were like sexy and smooth and secure and confident about their crafts and confident about their knowledges and I felt like that fitted the style of writing that Sarah Gailey has so perfectly well because it's witty and it's easygoing and it's exciting and adventurous and then to mix that style of writing with this character who has these constant insecurities it just it felt like, you know, when you put the wrong soy milk into the coffee and it just curdles, like it it just felt wrong, it felt off. Um, I can see what they were trying to do with the story and it didn't work. I'm, I still highly recommend reading the American Hippo books, uh, but I was very disappointed in this one. And I wished they, I wish they had had a better editor who would have told them this and to make them rewrite that trait of the character. The next one, the next book I read was... Oh yeah, this is when I was part in the Booker Boy book club with KD and the gang over in the Discord and we read Elizabeth Smart by Grand State... Uh, by Grand Central Station, I sat down and wept. We're at Grand Central Station, I sat down and wept, sorry. Uh, the prepositions. Um, that was an experience, wow. I had just come from reading this Sarah Gailey book that I was so disappointed in and dove into this. I read one chapter every day for 10 days because it yeah it has 10 chapters and each is like almost 10 pages long and they, oh wow this experience this book it's it's about a love affair it's about life it's about being a woman in the like 1960s it's about mental illness maybe it's about trying to survive it's oh it's so good so, in these t ten, ten-ish chapters in the book, we follow small, we get small snippets of uh, Elizabeth Smart's life when she was in a love affair with a poet whose name I don't know or have forgotten. And it's written in a way to me that is so beautiful. It made me feel so alive and so uplifted and so it connected me to grief and to life and to sadness and it was i don't know the way she used nature around herself the way she told about the trees and about feeling 
outside of society and trying to hang on to this love affair and trying to find love in places that was not giving her any love back and doing it in this extremely poetic way that I understand from the discussions in the Discord that not everyone was a fan of, but for me this was this was just a joy. Like I had the Odyssey which was so concrete and like this is what happened. And I had Hundred Years of Solitude, which was also like this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. And then I had Upright Women Wanted that disappointed me with the characters, and then this was just an opening into like a raw bleeding heart in the most poetic voice and it it, it re reminded me so much of uh, my experience with Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson in how like I don't really care what it was about I care about how the words made me feel when I read it and they made me feel like it was like a transcendent experience it was beautiful so that was that very much recommend I then went on to read something that I also very much recommend which I think if I would say my favorite books of the year this is this is my favorite like the, the the place is shared between this and Giovanni's room. And this is Unicorn Memoirs of a Muslim Drag Queen by Amru Al Qadi, also known as Glam Ru. This is a memoir, like the title says, obviously, of Amru's life up until now. They are like I think they're like thirty-ish, like same age as me, and. They grew up in an Iraqi family in Bahrain, who then moved to London. And Amru talks about gender, religion, racism, education, art, poetics. Like, so many beautifully told snippets of and like sad and heartbreaking stories of trying to find their way in this world, finding their, their character and then finally becoming this drag performer through so many like weird little by ways in life. I think that everyone should listen to this. I listen to it as an audiobook. I highly recommend to listen to it because it's told by Amru themselves and they can give you the most accurate <laughs> like voices to the different people and tones and it was so funny, incredibly well written, so funny, so sad, so heartbreaking. Like I had to stop listening at several points but just to like this was too much but so beautiful. I talked about it in my best of 2020 a lot also, but I cannot say how much this book meant to me. It was such an amazing experience and I think if you have any inkling of an interest in like memoirs and listening to people tell stories of their lives, this is definitely a book that you should read. Yes. Very, 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 very good. Yes. Mm. Then I read, yeah, I read the second book in that Swedish horror dark fantasy trilogy that I've been reading and talking about that's not translated to English, so it's not, maybe it doesn't make lo loads of sense to talk about it here, but it was very good. And then I read the reviews for the third and last book, and it says that that's not very good. So I think I'm going to, like, end it here and only read the two first books and feel good about that and not get into the third and last one because it would feel strange to read one when I know it's not as good as the two first ones. It was really good, really scary and if you read Swedish, Jorden Vaknar by Madeleine Beck is amazing. An amazing second book to a really good first book. Then I read, which I talked about in a vlog, um, Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke which was really good and I think it's like one of those that will grow old very well. I had the pleasure of annotating it with a pencil so I have all these quotes underlined. It had this beautiful passage where it, where it talked about grief and 
so many bits of knowledge that I, I felt like I agreed with so much, like talking about how the importance of beginning with the simple bits, like, and not try to handle the huge topics in your art making, like, uh, he writes to this kid he's, who's writing to him, like, don't start, don't try to write a love poem, like, just begin with trying to describe what's going on around you, and then when you're really, really comfortable in your craft, yeah, then you can, like, tackle the huge universal subjects, but, like, you really need to start with trying to find your voice with the very mundane and, and banal things, and I think that's really, really good advice, and also a way that you will get really interesting art from people if you ask them to just describe their situation and their life and their lived experience instead of these huge topics and huge um, big truths. That was a good experience. I, I think, yeah, most people probably have heard of this, but I still think it was very worth recommending. Um, I then got into a short story collection that I didn't like. It was called Beyond Binary. Uh, I think it was a bit, it felt a bit off. Um, there was one story in there that I really liked called Fisherman. And it was about a by Nalo Hopkinson and uh, I'm looking forward to reading more from Nalo Hopkinson because that was the one story in there that I really felt like I could connect with and felt like this is really giving me something, this is delivering but I put the book down after a few stories because it just, I didn't think that it was very... it didn't live up to my expectations really. Um, I then read a really good, a really good short story collection called uh, Jaganath, 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 J Jaganath, I don't know, by Karin Tidbeck who I also read Amatka by um, this fall. Jagannath was a collection of yeah, short stories where every story deals with a different kind of being and creature. It's very rooted in Swedish, like in the middle of Sweden kind of um, nature and mythology in a way, it tells really beautiful stories really scary sometimes but not in a terrifying way in a just a way that was just enough for me and i really liked it i really really recommend Karin Tidbeck i think it's one of the big good amazing discoveries i've done this year is to have my friend Isra who give them to me and say you need to read this so that was a really really good also book and then the last one, my camera is about to die, see if I can manage to tell the last one. I also listened to House Moving Castle and um, I really, really liked the beginning. The first bit, the, maybe the first half I found was amazing and then it kind of, eh, it, it slowed down somehow. Um, it reminds me, it's very similar in, a, in tone and in feeling to the Miyazaki movie, even though the story is not the same. So I got the same vibe, the same like cozy, lovely, magical feels, but the story was different. I don't care about that so much. But somehow the magic kind of trickled out of it for me. It got a bit too complex, like there were so many characters and then it ended in some kind of love situation that felt really forced and I didn't like it. So I, I guess like overall a positive experience, I think if I was 12 I would have devoured it, I would have loved it, but for me for now, like first half brilliant, second half uh, trickling out. And that's everything I read in December. Uh, my camera hasn't died yet, cheers to that. Mm. Fingers crossed I won't have to do much editing on this because I am tired, so tired because my week has been so much work on the computer and I'm just sitting down this weekend. No, I went swimming in the ocean yesterday. <laughs> or swimming, I walked out into the ocean. Um, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for watching this, even though it's like a month late. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let me know what you're reading. I'm really curious. And also if you have opinions about the 100 years of solitude thing and like show not tell and if you know other books that you feel like do the tell, part really good i i would be interested in that um i will see you the next time that i make a video and i hope you're well until then uh, bye bye <laughs> cheers again <gasps>